Between 2007 and 2010, Samuel Wanjiru earned about 160,000 USD in a parents' fees per race, making him the top paid Kenyan athlete at the time. However, the money came with fame, numerous affairs that Samuel Wanjiru had, heavy drinking, and due to his poor life choices, the star athlete fell to his death at his home in May of 2011. So, what happened? Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi-weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Samuel Wanjiru was born on 10th November 1986 in Nyahururu, Laikipia County, Kenya. He was raised in abject poverty alongside his brother Simon Joroge by their mother Hannah Wanjiru, who was also a single mother. Hence why Samuel Wanjiru adopted his mother's maiden name, Wanjiru, as his surname. Unfortunately, Samuel Wanjiru discontinued his education at around the age of 12, when his mother was unable to pay for his school fees due to financial constraints. However, as luck would have it, his running talent, nurtured since the age of eight, would change his life forever. In 2002, Samuel Wanjiru's remarkable story unfolded when, at the age of 15, he secured that place in a cross-country championship in Nairobi. This achievement caught the attention of a Japanese talent scout attending the championship, tasked with identifying talented young athletes to join high schools in Japan. Later that year, Samuel Wanjiru moved to Sendai in Japan and joined a local high school where he won various cross-country championships in Japan and internationally. Back home in Yahururu, Kenya, where Samuel Wanjiru would regularly travel to, his girlfriend, Trizanjiri, was eagerly waiting for his return. Samuel Wanjiru met his girlfriend, Trizanjiri, who was five years his senior, in 2005 while she was still a student at Mobit Secondary School in Laikipia. The two grew close, and Triza began making regular visits to his mother's home, and she developed a strong bond with Samuel's mother, Hannah Wanjiru. It was also in 2005, when Samuel was in Japan preparing for the Rotterdam Half Marathon, that during his absence, Hannah, Samuel Wanjiru's mother, invited Triza to live with them, asserting that Samuel was going to marry her anyway. With Samuel's approval, Triza moved in with Samuel Wanjiru's mother, at that time, Trisa was working as a hairdresser in Yahururu town, having received training at Mountaintop Beauty College in Nyeri after completing high school. In the same year, 11th September 2005, 18-year-old Samuel Wanjiru made history by breaking the world record in the Rotterdam Half Marathon in the Netherlands. Remarkably, at the tender age of 18, not only did he secure the record, but he also claimed the prize money, which included an additional 100,000 USD for breaking the record. As they say, money is the root of all evil. Following Samuel Wanjiru's victory and the financial gain, Triza noted that problems began to emerge. According to Triza, Samuel Wanjiru's mother, Hannah, underwent a change in behavior. She started displaying coldness towards Triza, going to the extent of accusing her of using witchcraft against her son. Despite Hannah's effort to frustrate their relationship, Samuel Wanjiru never sought to end his relationship with Triza, and he informally married her in a calmly stay marriage arrangement in 2005. Samuel Wanjiru further cemented his love and commitment to Triza by using the money that he won in Rotterdam to buy a piece of land and build one-bedroom rentals to increase their income. On the plot were four houses, and Samuel Wanjiru and his wife Teresa moved into one of the rentals before the construction of their grand family home, which was completed in 2007 in Yahururu's Mudaiga estate. The following year, in November 2006, Samuel Wanjiru and Teresa were blessed with their firstborn, a bouncing baby girl whom Samuel Wanjiru named after his mother. Samuel Wanjiru's and Teresa's relationship was going so well and they even planned to get legally married in August of 2007 at the Nyahururu Catholic Church. According to Teresa, their plans to get married came to a halt when Samuel Wanjiru allegedly walked home one day and told Teresa that the wedding was off, without giving any explanation, despite her pleas. Despite this gut-wrenching change in their wedding plans, 
the relationship remained stable, and Samuel Wanjiru continued his winning streak in the Global Running Championships. In 2008, Samuel Wanjiru won the 2008 Beijing Olympic Marathon in an Olympic record time of 2 hours, 6 minutes and 32 seconds, becoming the first Kenyan to win the Olympic gold in the marathon and the youngest gold medalist in the marathon since 1932. Soon after this win that garnered Samuel Wanjiru global recognition, his life underwent significant changes. Firstly, Samuel Wanjiru and Triza were blessed with their second born, a baby boy, and Triza notes that this was around the same time that their relationship began to become unstable. According to Triza, this was because they were not spending much time together and they started to drift apart. Since Samuel Wanjiru, now a gold winner in four marathons, shifted his training base from Nyahururu, where his wife and kids lived, to Ngong and occasionally the Eldorate training base. In 2009, Samuel Wanjiru's relationship with Triza worsened because he started drinking a lot, hanging out with the wrong friends and having extramarital affairs with women. These influences, combined with his indecisive nature, led him to make poor decisions. It was still in the same year, 2009, that Samuel Wanjiru met Mary Washerangugi in Yahururu, where they trained at the same track. Mary was a marathon runner who had won several accolades in the marathon world. For example, Mary was a 5,000 meters bronze medalist at the 2006 World Junior Championships in Athletics. Samuel Wanjiru's and Mary's friendship developed into a romantic relationship and the two got legally married in December of 2009 making Mary his second wife. This further caused a strain in Samuel Wanjiru's and Triza's relationship. It is important to know that the reason why Samuel Wanjiru was able to legally marry Mary Washera was that Samuel Wanjiru and his first wife Triza Njeri were not legally married. To further add salt to injury, Samuel got Mary a house in the same street as Triza, Samuel Wanjiru's first wife, and mother at Mudaiga Estate in Yahururu. According to the neighbors, the three women frequently fought and argued over Samuel Wanjiru, as each of the women wanted his undivided attention, a piece of his fame, and wealth. In August 2010, Mary and Samuel Wanjiru were blessed with a baby girl who was also named Anne Wanjiru after Samuel Wanjiru's mother. At this point, Samuel Wanjiru's and his first wife's Teresa's relationship was at a breaking point, and in the wee hours of Wednesday 22 December 2010, an argument ensued between the couple. Samuel Wanjiru threatened to kill Triza with an illegally acquired firearm. Triza escaped unhurt, while Samuel tried to get to her by smashing the window of his house with the muzzle of the rifle. Triza and the house help then fled into the guard house, whereby the guard helped them hide in an incomplete building in the vast compound. According to the then prosecutor John Ruto, Samuel Wanjiru then went ahead to hit the security guard with a rifle on his cheek and on the right hand. Trizo was then able to escape from the house and reported the matter to the Nyahururu police station at around 3.30 a.m. The police then went ahead to the couple's matrimonial home where they searched and recovered the firearm. Samuel Wanjiru was then arrested and in court denied both the accusations and claimed that he had been framed. He was then released on a bond of Kenya shillings 300,000. The police started conducting the investigations and the firearm was forwarded to ballistics experts to determine whether or not it had been used to commit other offenses. The judge then set up the mentioned date of the case to be 10th January 2011 and the hearing date was set to be 14th March 2011. To the shock of many, Teresa shortly thereafter withdrew her assault accusations against Samuel Wanjiru saying that her and Samuel Wanjiru were in the process of mending their relationship. Also withdrawing his assault complaints against Samuel Wanjiru was William Masinde, the family's night guard, who had filed an assault charge against the 2008 Beijing Olympic marathon champion Samuel Wanjiru. Following the withdrawal of the case, Samuel Wanjiru apologized to his wife and even threw a very public Valentine's Day dinner on 14 February 2011 at Carnival Restaurants, Nairobi, as seen here.
It is important to note that during the dinner, Samuel Wanjiro also swore to the public that Teresa was his official wife and not his second wife, Mary Washera. However, Samuel Wanjiro would not stop his old ways and he continued having relationships with numerous women. Just three months after publicly apologizing to his wife, Teresa, on 15th May 2011, 24 year old Samuel Wanjiro dropped by his pregnant mistresses. Judy Wamboy's house at Kitty Estate on Nakununyahururu Road. According to Judy, Samuel Wanjiru was in high spirits and only stayed in her house for an hour before heading to the house he shared with his first wife Teresa in Yahururu, where he claimed that he had an emergency that he had to take care of. It is at this point, at around 10 p.m., Samuel Wanjiru then called his other mistress, 22-year-old Jane Duta, who worked as a waitress at Kawafall restaurant in Yahururu, which was about one kilometer from Samuel Wanjiru's family home with Teresa. Samuel Wanjiru and Jane Duta had been in a relationship for a few months, and he called her that night and told her to wait for him at the restaurant because he wanted to see her. According to Jane's account of events in court, Samuel Wanjiru arrived at her place of work at Kawafall restaurant shortly before closing time at around 11 p.m. Samuel Wanjiru was already drunk when he got to the restaurant to meet Jane. Since Kawa restaurant was closing, the two, Samuel and Jane, headed to another restaurant nearby called Jim Rock Restaurant, where they had a few beers. Samuel Wanjiru then asked Jane to accompany him to his house, the home he shared with Teresa. Samuel Wanjiru told her that, he was no longer with Teresa and that Teresa had moved out and that the house now belonged to Jane. According to Jane, when she left the bar, she knew she was not going back home. In her mind, they would get married and her life would change forever, marrying the multi-millionaire as she would not have to go back to work as a bartender again. At the same time, Teresa, Samuel Wanjiru's first wife, had spent the fateful day with Samuel Wanjiru's cousin, James Mara, and one of his drivers. Teresa then left Mara's home at around 12.30 p.m. and was dropped home shortly after. According to Teresa, she first went to the servant quarters to grab a cup of tea before proceeding to the main house. Teresa then entered the house and went straight to the master bedroom upstairs. In the master bedroom, Teresa found the lights on with someone Wanjiru sleeping, and sleeping next to him was a woman, Jane Duta, whom Teresa was not familiar with. Teresa asked Jane who she was, and Jane exclaimed that she was Samuel Wanjiru's new wife. According to Teresa, Jane jumped from the bed and grabbed her neck in an attempt to strangle her. Teresa said she saw Samuel Wanjiru sleeping face up and his eyes closed, but he never talked to her or woke up to stop the fight. Teresa then left the bedroom, locked the door with a padlock, and also locked the metal gate downstairs leading from the master bedroom. Once outside, Teresa then called the Nyahururu OCS to report that Samuel Wanjiru had come home with another woman and that Teresa feared for her life because the woman had tried to kill her. In the meantime, Samuel Wanjiru went to the balcony and shouted at Teresa to open the gate downstairs leading out of the bedroom. Teresa refused to open the gate and shouted at Samuel Wanjiru to wait for the police officers to arrive and open for him. It is at this point that Samuel Wanjiru jumped from the balcony from their one-story home and landed on his head. Seeing that Samuel Wanjiru was not moving and that he had blood coming from his nose and mouth, Teresa fled to the nearby Busara Nursery School to seek help, but all was in vain. She then called Mr. Mara, Samuel Wanjiru's cousin, whom she had been with earlier, to explain what had happened. Teresa then called the police at the Nyahururu police station to report the incident. The police arrived at the home, and Samuel Wanjiru was taken to the Nyahururu district hospital. While Samuel was in hospital, Teresa then went to Nyahururu police station to record the statement of what had led to Samuel Wanjiru's fall. At the police station, the police recorded Teresa's statement and even went with her to her home and took photos of where Wanjiru had fallen. They then returned to the police station, and this was when Teresa learned that Samuel Wanjiru had died. Samuel Wanjiru's demise shocked the world, and news outlets globally mourned the 24-year-old Marathon's tragic death. At home, Samuel Wanjiru's death caused an irreparable crack in his family, with Samuel Wanjiru's mother accusing Teresa of killing her son with a metal bar.
Hana, Samuel Wanjiru's mother, even moved to the Nakuru High Court to stop Triza, Samuel Wanjiru's wife, from buying the athlete. Justice Anyara Mukule issued an order to stop Triza from buying Samuel Wanjiru until an autopsy was conducted. Consequently, the post-mortem report issued by government pathologist Moses Njue after conducting an autopsy on Samuel Wanjiru on 27th May 2011 asserted that the athlete succumbed to injuries caused by blunt force trauma at the back of his head, which could have been caused by the fall. Additionally, the toxicology report outlined that Samuel Wanjiru was highly intoxicated at the time of his demise, which could have limited his decision-making ability and worsened the internal bleeding caused by the deadly fall. Following the autopsy report, the court order stopping Triza from burying Samuel Wanjiru was lifted and the star athlete was buried on 11 June 2011 at Heshima village, Nyahururu County. However, Samuel Wanjiru's burial did not bring an end to the legal debacle his family was embroiled in. In April 2012, Judy Wamboy, Samuel Wanjiru's mistress, whose house he went the night he died, moved to court demanding a share of Samuel Wanjiru's estate for her seven-month son, called Samuel Jones Kamau, and named after his father, Samuel Wanjiru was born shortly after the athlete's demise. The legal debacle continued as an inquest into Simon Wanjiru's death was started on 9th January 2013 at the Milimani Law Courts in Nairobi, an inquest meaning a judicial investigation into the circumstances of a violent, unexpected, or unexplained death. In the case of Samuel Wanjiru, the inquest aimed to establish whether Samuel Wanjiru jumped from the balcony and died or whether there was foul play involved. The most surprising turn of events during the inquest was when former chief government pathologist Moses Njue, who had ruled Samuel Wanjiru's death as an accident in 2011, took the stand and changed his claims. During the inquest, the former pathologist claimed that he was convinced that Samuel Wanjiru was hit by a blunt object after he had jumped from the balcony of his home, landing on his legs or possibly he had been pushed from the balcony, then struck on his head. He also described the injuries on Samuel Wanjiru's body as inconsistent with a fall from the balcony since the height of the building was barely three meters from the ground. For a fall to cause substantial injuries resulting in death, the former chief pathologist claimed that it should be at least six meters high. However, the initial toxicology report Finding that Samuel Wanjiru was indeed heavily intoxicated during his demise remained consistent during the inquest. Another unexplainable query raised during the inquest was the presence of blood on the balcony where Samuel Wanjiru jumped from. It was unclear if this blood belonged to Samuel Wanjiru or it was fresh blood resulting from the altercation from the night Teresa found Samuel Wanjiru in bed with Jane Dutta. Also, a key investigator of the athlete's death, called Kanake, told the inquest that it was also hard to establish the cause of Samuel Wanjiru's death since the athlete landed on his face when he jumped from the balcony, yet the injury that led to his demise was at the back of the head. The inquest into Samuel Wanjiru's tragic demise ran for nine years, and in February 2022, Milimani Law Court judge Wendy Kagendo ordered the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nordin Haji, to close the inquest, citing that it had taken too long. In October 2023, 10 years after Samuel Wanjiru tragically died in his home in Yahururu, the inquest into his death came to an end. The inquest ruled out murder or suicide as the cause of Samuel Wanjiru's death and determined that the death was an accident, resulting from Samuel Wanjiru jumping from the balcony in his home in Yahururu. Milimani Chief Magistrate Wendy Kangendo concluded that there was no evidence to support allegations of suicide or murder, and that Samuel Wanjiru's wife, Trisan Jerry, did not kill her husband, Samuel Wanjiru. What do you think happened to Samuel Wanjiru? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Regrettably, Samuel Wanjiru's life serves as a cautionary tale, illustrating the consequences that can arise from the pursuit of wealth and fame without maintaining discipline. We send his family and friends our heartfelt condolences, and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until then, 
Take care, stay safe, and always trust your gut.